Welcome to episode 3 of the VFR restoration and we kick this episode off with a bit of rectification work from episode 2 and a prime example of why you should always do your own research and not just assume what the previous person did was correct like I did when fitting this sprocket so thanks to everyone that noticed and pointed out my mistake With the rectification work now done, let's crack on with the next stage of this restoration, beginning with the rear shock. The needle roller bearings in the shock linkage feel ok, but to be safe they will be replaced with brand new ones. The shock body will need replated, as you can see it is very warm. Also, the spring will need re-powder coated, as the original coating has started flaking off. The collar that holds the spring in place is rusted solid, so I'm going to have to use the pressure from the spring itself to help break it loose. Since this style of shock doesn't have the usual Schrader valve on the base of the reservoir to test for pressure, I can push the base of the reservoir in and if there is no resistance it means all of the nitrogen has leaked and is safe to disconnect from the shock body.
The seal head, valve stack and the oil don't seem to be in the worst condition but after 33 years a little refresh certainly isn't the worst idea. Now I have to be honest with you all and say I'm not going to be building this shock myself as it's classed as a non-rebuildable unit and as such getting a hold of all the seals and bushings required isn't really possible for a member of the general public which really bugs me. So I've had no choice but to send it off to a specialist firm for the rebuild but I certainly wasn't going to send it away without showing you guys what was inside it and what condition it was in. Now on to the rebuild of the front forks, and happily these can be easily rebuilt at home. So let's waste no time in getting them torn down. This is actually quite a nice bit of carbon fibre. What do you think? Reuse it or replace it with an original Honda mudguard? And now with the fork separated from the wheel and bottom yoke, I can now start to break them down into their component form so that I can replace the oil, bushings and seals, as well as checking a few dimensions to make sure everything is still within spec.
With the slider out, we can now see the seal and bushings clearly, and there isn't a lot of wear to be seen. Couple that with the fairly clean oil, then it's safe to assume that these shocks have been rebuilt in the fairly recent past. Well that's the disassembly part complete, now let's get this horrible blue anodized finish removed. I'm now going to check that the springs are still within their service limit. Two seventy seven and two seventy six millimeters, so still well within the limit. You can really see the wear on the old bushings when compared to the new ones.
one slider down, just one more to go. The shocks will be painted in a dark metallic grey since these are the version with the adjustable rebound damping. If they were the early non-adjustable type they would be a bright silver instead. With the damper rod in place and no holes left for the oil to escape from, we can fill the shock with the specified amount of oil.
which in this case is 390 millilitres. In addition to filling both shocks with the same amount of oil, you must measure the oil level also, so that both shocks are even, so that they have exactly the same damping qualities. Don't forget to bleed all the air out of the shock first though, otherwise you will end up with a false reading. With the oil level correct, I can now refit the spring, spacers and top cap. Putting a piece of plastic on the top cap stops the socket from marring the finish. So with both of the front shocks rebuilt, I'm afraid I'm going to have to end this episode here. I know it's a bit of an anticlimax, and I apologise, but sadly I'm still playing catch up from the last episode. The next episode will be worth watching though, as the bike will finally be back as a rolling frame, and then we can finally get started on the engine, as I know a lot of you are very keen to see inside of that sweet little V4. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this short but sweet episode and will join me again next time.